interviews who you see there from the left hand side um, from, from your point of view. Holger Robrecht, who is the director of the sustainability management program of, at the European Secretariat. Mark Hitzen, director of the sustainable procurement program at the European Secretariat. Kobi Brandt, who speaks here now on behalf of the Local Action for Biodiversity program. Barbara Anton from the International Training Center, who is taking care of a number of international water projects. Yunus Arikan from the city's climate center in Bonn. Emani Kumar, who is here not on behalf of his regional secretariat, but on behalf of the local renewable model communities. Monica, who has uh, involvement in both the local renewables and the Local Action for Biodiversity program. Gino, who will be here mainly for the local government um, uh, climate roadmap. Wayne, who will, Wayne Westcott, who will uh, cover uh, climate change, but also the water campaign. Um, Laura, talking about sustainable procurement and, um, and, and climate as well, and local agenda as well. And Stefan Kuhn, who will be uh, uh, focusing on uh, local agenda 21 and sustainable communities and cities. So we want now to explore in a more an interview style what we have done in terms of our program uh, delivery um, in the last in the last three years. So let's probably start with local agenda 21. As you know, local agenda 21 was. Uh, created by our founder, Jeb Brookman, as a notion already two years uh, before uh, ICLE came into existence. Um, he conceived it. When ICLE was founded, he was asked to, to uh, actually uh, provide um, uh, input to the Rio Earth Summit, which then took place in uh, 1992. And from that moment on, Local Agenda 21 was there out in the world, and ICLE had a major role in it and we have run a number of activities in this field and generated a huge movement. Um, so when we look back at the last three years, um, maybe I can ask Stefan, so what do you, uh, would you say, um, where did we stand three years ago, where do we stand now, what has changed? Has there been any, any development in Local Agenda 21? Well, let me, let me Maybe please just uh, mention one thing that has not changed, and this is remarkable still, is um, wherever you go in the world, Local Agenda 21 is still the best known product of ICLEI and the best known concept, which I think is still remarkable. Um, on the other hand side, um, what I see is that Local Agenda 21 has become part of the mainstream, which, which has a couple of uh, implications. First of all, you will uh, find elements of Local Agenda 21 now in almost every international program. You will find them in many, many local programs, although they not always appear as Local Agenda 21. So we have achieved that the main idea of an integrated approach and of participatory planning has been taken on in many, many, many programs, also of other organizations. But even internally, in our own programs, if you look at the biodiversity action, uh, CCP, and so on and so on, elements of Local Agenda 21 you find in almost every program meanwhile. I think this is a great success, and I think it's a trend that is still continuing. OK, so um, Local Agenda 21, I mean, is, is participatory planning, is involving the stakeholders, is involving communities in, 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 in the planning. Um, on the other hand, uh, so when, when plans are then going towards implementation, does local agenda also involve some sort of tracking mechanism that actually something is being implemented? And, 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 uh, or is it like, let's say, uh, the, the plans are out there and the mayor has uh, had a press conference and the local agenda action plan has been launched and that's it. So what, uh, how can we follow that actually implementation takes place? I think that is clearly focusing on the, on the development that has taken place in the last couple of years. Um, it was obviously so that after many, many local action plans have been released and adopted by local councils all across the world, um, 
we had to make sure that these are implemented. Many of them had not been implemented and the movement was very strongly towards target setting, towards working with indicators in, in, the, in the attempt to measure successes uh, on a local level. We have not provided um, internationally local governments from the ICLE, on, on behalf of ICLE, on purpose, uh, with a common set of indicators. We've been discussing that very much, but we have uh, found that the local situations are so diverse that, uh, and we, 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 we could find in, in all the world regions, very, very different attempts to work with the issue of indicators. So that didn't really make sense to have a centralized system and, uh, and, and marketing and promoting that among our membership. And yet when you look at the internet, uh, the, there is a website called Local Evaluation 21. And this, I think, in 18 languages or so. And uh, so their cities can do self-assessment of, 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 of where they stand in their local agenda work. So what, what, what is the result of that? When we look at that, so what, how would you describe the outcome of that? I think we have to distinguish here between um, outcomes in terms of higher levels of sustainability, in terms of, for example, emission reductions and things like these and of changes in the governance landscape that we're working in. I think that Local Agenda 21 has indeed been very successful all around the world to change the way how local governments work. And Local Evaluation 21 is particularly a tool that tries to measure that and give feedback, automatic feedback to local governments um, on how they perform, how they, for example, involve their public, how they involve stakeholders, what tools they apply and uh, how, how, say, w which elements, which, which tools and modules of good governance they apply and which they don't. I would like to explore one more question in terms of Local Agenda 21. Uh, some years ago, we actually said uh, many cities have, uh, local governments have done the uh, Local Agenda process and looked at the sustainability of, of their entire community, but then they have identified that certain aspects um, are of more relevance than others. For example, in Latin America, um, insecurity and uh, violence in cities may for some places be the overriding sustainability issue that, that is a barrier to sustainability. And as long as people can't go safely on the roads and feel safe, how could they then care for other aspects like environment? And we have actually engaged in a, in a regional project that is uh, doing local agendas for peace and security. Laura, can you tell us uh, a little bit where that stands and what you would see as the key learnings from that? Yes, well, I can say that Local Agenda 21 was a very successful process in Latin America in general. And one of the outcomes which I think is really important is a demand that came from our uh, membership, which was to establish uh, their priority, which in this case was uh, facing violence in urban areas and also violence in um, confl uh, conflict areas in borders because of the immigration between countries. So um, we have been working in several countries in Latin America uh, to deal with these problems and to raise awareness of local governments in regards to local security because it's not an issue that is dealt with by the local level. So it was very important to help these cities uh, and towns even to deal uh, with uh, the violence arising in their own communities. And we established this uh, local agenda for um, safe communities and an observatory on violence uh, in partnership with several levels, different levels of government, which was really important, and also in research mm -hmm. institutions. Okay, thank you. So while local agenda has been one of the big pillars of our program framework from the outset, from the beginning, the second one was um, uh, climate change, cities for climate protection. And of course, nowadays we move also into climate adaptation. And um, so we have been <laughs> become quite famous through uh, the methodology with which we work in the cities for climate protection campaign and that we bring cities through a certain process. Wayne, can you just explain um, how that works and how it has uh, played out in the last three years and whether you see any, any development in, in, in this So field. Um, Cities for Climate Protection um, has really acted as a way for local governments to work their way through a challenging issue by simplifying in, in straightforward sets of activities things that councils could, 
could achieve. So understanding where they are now through their inventories.